Hello everyone. A ton of you have asked us to make strategies on Martingale in the comments section and thus in this video we are covering how to build a Martingale based strategy on TradeTron. So before we get into how to build the strategy, let's first understand what exactly is a Martingale adjustment. So a Martingale adjustment is quite straightforward. We, we first look at a shorted, uh, shorted instrument. So in my example, I'm giving you an example of an 18,000 call that I have shorted. So let's assume I shot an 18,000 call at let's say 100 rupees. Now assume that the market goes up, all right? When market goes up, my call will be in serious trouble. And because I, 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 will, I will be facing a loss on my shorted call, um, I am assuming that let's say this uh, this 100 uh, rupees in premium becomes let's say 200 rupees. In this case, what I will do is in order to adjust my mart in order to make a martingale base adjustment, I will first square off my 18,000 call and I will book the loss of my 200 rupees. But what I will do is at the same time when I buy my 18,000 call in order to square off this first instrument, I will now find a strike which is close to the entry price. Uh, of my 18,000 call. So let's assume my entry price was 100. So now I will find a strike which is uh, at trading at a price of 100 and I will double the quantity in this particular uh, trade. So what I will do is that now I will uh, let's assume I find that 18,500 call is trading at let's say 100 rupees. So I will take an 18,500 call and I will short it but I will not short 100 quantity I will short 200 quantity basically I am doubling up the quantity. and this same adjustment will keep going so let's assume my 18,500 call which I had two lots of uh, entered at 100 rupees has now become 200 rupees in that case I will now square off my 18,500 call both the lots and now I'll find an instrument again which is trading at 100 rupees and short four lots of that and, and so on. So it will keep going. Uh, so this way you can take, a, uh, you can make adjustments based on a martingale. So uh, I will show you how do we build a martingale strategy. Since the strategy is fairly long, I have pre-built a part of the strategy and I will show you some parts uh, live. So I will first show you the entry condition which is fairly straightforward. So my entry condition out here is that if my uh, time is greater than 9.30 and it is a Friday, I am basically doing this as a positional strategy. So um, uh, my entry happens on let's say at 9.30 on a Friday uh, and I will want my entry to happen only once. So my position detail will make sure that I am taking an entry only one time. And uh, on Friday I am taking at uh, 9.30. Now I, I have a position builder for the same. So just quickly have a look at this position builder. Now my position builder will basically have my ATM call and put shorted at my uh, at the uh, at the market price at uh, 930. Now I will have two different repair continuances. So my two different repair continuances will basically take care of my adjustments. Now in order to make my adjustments properly, I need a few details. So I need the instrument name. I will need the instrument uh, strike price and I will need the instrument uh, entry price. Okay. So with these three details, I can make sure that whenever my, 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 my instrument doubles in price, I can make a square off of that instrument and I can then short double the quantity of that. So um, in my runtime variable, once I take my entry, in my runtime variable, I have a few variables that I have made. So you can see CE underscore INS. So CE underscore INS is basically uh, my instrument where I am saving my instrument name. So in order to capture instrument name, I have used a keyword called traded instrument name. Now in traded instrument name, I have selected entry out here. I've selected instrument uh, as my field and I've selected my underlying as nifty 50 with set one condition one leg one because I'm basically looking at my call instrument. So this will basically allow me to capture my instrument name for my call. Now, uh, now that I have uh, captured my instrument name for my call, I'll save it, submit it and I will close this. Now, after saving my instrument name for my call, I want my strike price. So in order to capture the strike price, I will basically use a keyword called traded instrument. Now, previously I used traded instrument name because I wanted the instrument name. This time I want only a number. I want the strike price at which my trade happened. So I will use my traded, uh, I, I'll use a keyword called traded instrument. So in traded instrument, I will use my condition type as entry, field as strike, uh, underlying will be nifty and again set one condition one leg one that is quite straightforward now that I have got my uh, instrument strike I'll close this and I will move on to the instrument price 
So in order to capture the instrument price, I'll again use the same keyword traded instrument with entry price and nifty 50. So out here I'm using entry price and my underlying is nifty 50 set one condition one leg one. So now I have got all three values that I needed. So I have my instrument name, I have my instrument strike and I have my instrument entry price. Now do note that all of these values that you see out here, whenever you are dealing with runtime variables, these variable names are case and space sensitive. So if you make a spacebar error out here, it will cause you a lot of problems, uh, 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 you know, while, while using this uh, strategy. So do not use an extra space or do not unnecessarily make the uh, case capital. So always suggested to have a variable name as a small case instrument. Um, after doing that, you can see that I have done the same thing for my put instrument name, put instrument strike and put instrument price. The only difference that is out here is that when I am using the traded instrument name, I am always selecting 112 because I am basically looking at my second leg out here. So uh, with, with that understanding of my call and put that I have uh, successfully captured my call and put instrument name, strike and price, I will now move on to my repair continuous. So in order to show you the repair continuous, I basically have a simple condition out here. Now my condition is that my uh, when my LTP is double the entry price, I will want to square off. Now do note that since I am doing this as a repair continuous, my my uh, uh, I want to do this continuously, I will not select traded instrument out here. So when you select LTP, I'm not going to select traded instrument because I don't want to always look at the entry instrument. I want to look at the instrument that I have defined out here in my instrument name. Now, since I want to look at my call instrument, I will select uh, uh, call instrument name. I'll select get runtime out here. So LTP of get runtime. Now get runtime will basically fetch my instrument name. So I have in my get runtime, I have selected CE underscore INS as my instrument name. Now this instrument name will always be updated. So when my repair continues happens using runtime data, I will update the CE underscore INS in order to capture the latest instrument that it was trading. So previously in our example, we were trading 18,000, then 18,500, then 18,000, uh, uh, let's say 19,000. So whenever we change the call instrument, the instrument name changed, which is why I'm selecting my get runtime out here with my CE underscore INS. Now, I'll select my uh, my keyword as get runtime CE underscore price. Now the same concept happens for my price. So my price is uh, is dependent on the instrument that I trade. So when my instrument uh, is traded, I'm also capturing the price at which it took an entry. So thus I am selecting get runtime uh, CE underscore price as my uh, as my keyword and I'm selecting multiplied by number two. So this keyword is basically allowing me to check if my LTP, so if the 18,000 call price is double that of the entry price. So CE underscore price is basically giving my entry price. So if I entered at 100 and now the price is 200, which means it's doubled in price, in that case, this condition would be true. So I hope this uh, explanation was helpful. We will now look at the position builder. So in the position builder, uh, I will basically want to uh, manage a square off. Now, in order to manage my square off, I have my position builder built where I have a buy position. So let's say uh, I am taking a trade in my NFO exchange call underlying is nifty. My strike in my strike FX, I am basically fetching the same uh, get runtime keyword by using CE underscore strike. So we had also saved the strike price so that we can use it later. So this will basically fetch my uh, call underscore strike. Now, um, uh, this strike will basically be able to uh, always update and thus I can square off the latest instrument that I had traded. Now, uh, you can see the quantity. So in quantity, I basically want to, if I took an entry in one lot, I want to execute uh, a square off for one lot only. So I am using a keyword called position detail. So I am selecting position detail. In my position detail, I'm selecting my condition type as all, transaction type as all, and my instrument out here will be call since I want to only look at the call quantity. So this position detail will be able to fetch my call quantity that was traded. Now do remember that position detail will give you the overall quantity irrespective of what multiplier you are on. So in order to adjust for the multiplier, I'm dividing this by the multiplier. So it will be position detail divided by multiplier. Now I will close this and I will update it. Um, 
I will now want to sell my uh, instrument also. So in order to sell that particular instrument, I have uh, I have a strike effects that I have designed. Now this strike effects uses find strike as the keyword. So my logic out here is that the same entry price at which I had originally shorted my call, I want to short uh, an instrument which is trading at currently the same ent entry price. So let's assume previously I had entered at hundred rupees. Now if I if I want to uh, if I if I want to find another call instrument at hundred rupees, I will use find strike. And within find strike, I will select my expiry. I'll select my field as LTP, and I will select my value as get runtime number with my option type as call. Now after doing that, I will close this, and I will select my uh, get runtime number as my uh, instrument name. So in my variable name, I'll add CE underscore price. Now CE underscore price will basically fetch the uh, entry price of my call. So using this CE underscore price, I'll fetch the entry price of my call, and now I can submit this. So this find strike will basically find the call which is trading at hundred rupees when the uh, when the uh, when the original instrument has become double the price. So this way, I can uh, I can find the relevant strike. Now finding the strike is one thing. I also need to find the uh, I also need to build a logic for doubling the quantity. So in order to double the quantity, I have uh, I have built a formula where I'm using position detail multiplied by number two. So again, position detail is the same what I had used earlier. It is uh, I'm selecting all in condition type, transaction type, and instrument type, and I'm multiplying it by number two and dividing this by the multiplier. After I update this, you can see that my logic for my repair continuous is ready. And now what it will do is that when my entry happens at let's say 18,000 call, uh, 18,000 call uh, uh, at 100 rupees. After it becomes let's say 200 rupees. In that case, it will find an instrument which is trading at 100 rupees and then short double the quantity of that and then square off my original 18,000 call. Now, after doing this, I also need to generate my runtime variables in order to save my call instrument name, instrument strike, and instrument price because I want to keep doing this. At 18,500, I again want to see if 18,500, which was entered at let's say 100 rupees, has doubled or not. If it has doubled, Again, I will want to uh, do the same process. So, my uh, in order to save my instrument name out here, I will basically um, again use the same keywords that I had done earlier, but there will be a slight difference. The difference will be that in here I'll select repair continuous in my condition type, and in a, in my set number I'll select one condition one and leg two. This is because I want to look at the second leg of my repair continuous. Now I'll close this and similarly you'll go for the strike. So in the strike again we'll use the same keyword that we had originally used as traded instrument. So traded instrument I'll select repair continuous, I'll select strike nifty 50 112. Similarly I'll do the same thing for my price. So I'll, uh, I'll use a traded instrument out here as my keyword and instead of strike I'll select price out here again nifty 112. Now after doing this you are pretty much set to go. So um, now your your martingale uh, logic is ready for uh, your call side. Now you have to do the exact same thing for the put side. So I'll just quickly show it to you and explain you that again for my put I am basically looking at my uh, my put instrument as my uh, as my get runtime uh, in in get runtime uh, instrument uh, entry price I'm selecting PE underscore price because that was my variable name. And if it becomes double, in that case, I will execute my adjustment. Now, let's have a look at the same position builder for the put. So, my position builder out here will basically be able to square off uh, my uh, my put trade. So, we'll again look at the strike FX. Stri strike FX will be the same thing, get runtime PE underscore strike. And my quantity out here, in my quantity FX for my for my put, I will use position detail divided by multiplier as I had done in the call. Now this is basically for my buy square of length. Um, similarly, I have the same logic done for my uh, put uh, short instrument. So let's say I'll go to strike FX. Again, we have the same uh, same uh, fine strike keyword. In fine strike, we are selecting uh, week uh, uh, week as the expiry, and we are selecting get runtime number. Now again in fine strike, I'm selecting field as LTP so that I'm able to find the LTP of that particular relevant instrument and the value will be get runtime number. 
and I'll select my option type which is very important as put. I'll close this and again I will uh, go to the uh, quantity fx. Now the quantity fx will be position detail multiplied by number 2. So I'll put this in brackets which is again very important and in my position detail make sure that you select put as your instrument and not call divide by multiplier. Now this will be able to double the quantity every time. So this, this particular logic will be able to adjust for um, uh, whenever whenever your put uh, increases to double of the price, you find the put of the same entry price and then double the quantity at which you uh, had originally entered in. So now we look at the universal exit. So my universal exit is quite straightforward. If today is the expiry day, which is that if it is a Thursday and it is 3.15, in that case we will want to ex uh, close this entire strategy. So this is how you can build a martingale strategy. Uh, if you have any other suggestions that you want us to cover in future videos, feel free to drop it in the comments below and we would be happy to take it up. Thank you.